In this first chapter, we will look at uh, digital transformation. Important when talking about digital transformation is that we can see both as a process, but also as an end goal uh, of this process. But let me further explain you this uh, throughout the chapter. Uh, first, we would like to explain to you what digital transformation, uh, or why it is important. Uh, it's important not only in the sense that why it is needed, but also why it is already taking place. And that's because of the why, it is, why digital government is because of the introduction, emergence of many different technologies. Uh, we see that in society, but also in particular sectors of society, in government, economy, uh, research, etc., where we see that new technologies are emerging, are being uh, integrated or are, are entering these new fields. And this brings quite a lot of new expectation, new demands among those active in these sectors, but also to citizens, customers, etc. That's one side of the story. But on the other hand, we still see some old structures, old practices, old cultures, old processes. So there is some reluctance to change. Uh, people tend to stick to existing structures, existing working practices, because changing is not always easy. Changing requires additional efforts. Uh, but unfortunately, to take care or to take advantage of or to realize this added, benefit, added values, the benefits of these new technologies and the new the opportunities they provide, uh, we need to make sure that these old structures, old practices, old cultures and procedures are transformed. So therefore, we need to um, make sure that uh, society, government, public sector, etc., can take advantage of these new technologies. And we are able to uh, ensure or realize these new expectations, new demands. Digital transformation, in fact, can be seen as a process in which these several types of digital technologies are used to create, modify services, processes, cultures, experiences. In fact, this goes beyond the related but different concepts of digitization and digitalizations, which were, are more focused on one hand on the shift from analog to digital, when we talk about digitization, and on the adaptation, small changes to single processes through the use of technologies which is when we talk about digitalization. Now, digital transformation uh, builds further on these two, but in fact goes much further. It's not only about uh, digital, digitizing, it's not only about digitalization, but it's really about new, completely different ways of functioning, new ways of creating value, new ways of functioning internally, but also how to better cooperate, how to better involve external stakeholders, and this all supported by digital technologies. We can see this transformation is taking place throughout society, many different sectors. And among these sectors, there's the government, public administration, which is in fact the, the key, the central in this course, and especially in this model. Looking at the public sector, we see that digital technologies enable transformation on two, on two ends. One end, there's the end of the, the policies, policy making, policy implementation. The other end, there's the site of services, services design, service delivery. Policy and policy, policy making, policy implementation is in fact about taking actions to realize changes in the world. And this already relies on, on data and technologies for many different years. Decision makers, politicians, they make use of data technologies uh, supporting different phases of the policy cycle to identify problems, formulate policies, take the actual decisions on, on which policy uh, options they will take, to actually implement this policy option, and finally to evaluate their existing implemented policies. Now, when we think about transformation in this context, we talk about new ways of identifying problems, new ways of formulating policies, taking decisions, evaluating policies, and again, this all supported by data and digital technologies, which in fact could contribute to completely transformation rethinking of this policy cycle. Now, that's just one end of what when we're talking about transforming government. The other side is about transforming the services provided by government to its citizens, businesses, and others, other users of their services. These services include, on one hand, the very traditional, typical services, government services such as education, health, public works, etc. But also, besides these very uh, common, very typical government services, we all know, we see that governments are interacting with their citizens, businesses, and other users. Uh, in many different ways, many other fields of applications, etc. Sometimes also these services are provided by government themselves. In other cases, governments rely on the intermediary organizations. So you see quite a lot of interactions between governments and, and, and their citizens, businesses, and other users. Some of these interactions already taking place digital, 
others that are still more physical interactions, but well supported by digital data, by technologies. In fact, that side of the story, this service delivery, this design of services, this improvement of services, new services, better services, etc. That's a central element of our course. Although we will also address uh, at certain occasions also the policy side, in fact, that the, the aspect of services is uh, most prominent throughout our course. When talking about this digital government transformation or this transformation towards digital government, we can see in fact this transformation or evolution as a process with different levels of maturity. We start from the uh, traditional use of ICT in the back office towards governments being more and more present online, providing their services online, making sure that these services can be completed online to actually becoming a digital government. Now, looking at this evolution, we see a changing and extending scope and focuses where it's not only about automating internal processes of government, but also more and more about recognizing, taking into consideration the needs and demands of citizens, other users, also about actually improving these services to citizens collaborating with them, et cetera, towards realizing working, to, working together, collaborated in a, in a very high, very in-depth, uh, innovative ways in order to all together jointly realize innovation, realize growth in society. Important here, right, right side of the picture, do not consider digital government as something separately, but rather let's see it as one element uh, uh, within a broader evolution towards digital economy and society. We have digital government, but we also have digital businesses, digital citizens. Although each of these have their own focus, their own, uh, should I say, it, key elements, they are strongly related to each other. And it's important not to consider each of these separately. That's also the EU vision on how to consider digital government as, as an element within the broader digital transformation of economy and society. We will further explain this EU vision on, on digital government, digital transformation in the second chapter. But let us first look at, look at the key conclusions of this first uh, chapter. Uh, let's, on one hand, we see that digital transformation is taking place in many different sectors. It is driven by a wide variety of technologies, and it also applies to the public sector or to government. Now, when we talk about digital transformation, it's about the shift, the realization of a digital government uh, that is designed and operated to fully take advantage of data and technologies to create, optimize, and transform public services. 